Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage Michael Hurwitz, the 2019 James Renwick Alliance Master of the Medium in Wood. Thank you. I'm, I'm reminded of a, um, a quote from a, a tap dancer that followed the tap dancer that I was studying with about 30 years ago. He was an old master. The next guy that got up said, I wouldn't give that spot to a leopard. <laughs> it, but, he, but he had to go on anyway. Um, a few, few years ago, um, I did a presentation where I tried to kind of block out major influences in the work. So um, it's not chronological, but instead uh, there are three, three groups of inspiration. Um, first one is materials. And um, I've got a lot of slides to go through, so I'm, I'm going to move fast. But this, um, this was at the sawmill in Japan about 22 years ago. I bought, through auction, I bought some lumber there. I'm at the mill now sawing it up. And um, I'm just, just recently sort of split that log apart in my studio and spread it around to kind of panel the walls. And I, th I think it's time to use it up now. It's been, it's been too precious to use it. Um, but I think the time has come to start using it. Here I am marking where I want the, where I want the saw to cut through. Um, you can see that's, a, that's the crotch, the image on the right. There's a lot of very active kind of turmoil in the grain in that section of the wood, so I was cutting to, to highlight that feature. That, and that wood is called Zelkova member of the elm family. Um, the bird cage, that all started by just a walk in the woods and I found that branch with that, um, that curve and that taper and I knew that I wanted to make something from it. Um, and it was a few years of sort of tripping over it in the studio before, um, before it became this bird cage. It's about 18 feet long. And I, I wanted the, um, the birds to be an important part of the composition, so I'd, I'd kind of imagined it as larger peach-faced lovebirds on the left and, and more finches on the right. This also started with these triangular-shaped uh, Zelkopa boards that I was lucky to come across. On oh, Damascus steel. Um, kind of a combination lock and handle. Sorry, I'm going to set. Again, Zelkova. The, the material is um, Indian raw silk that's been saturated with epoxy and sanded. It's basically a it's indestructible surface. I mean, you can spill a hot rum toddy on there and it won't. This might show up again in the, in the, in the last group of work where I talk about the, the ideas behind it, but um, the, the materials were important as well. This, it's sitting on a um, petrified wood. There's a, a bronze ballast in the middle, just a very heavy weight. Um, the woven basket is lined with papyrus paper and, um, and the papyrus paper is covered with a varnish that's made from cashew oil. And that started with ruminations or the, the story I heard as a kid of Moses being left in the, in the bulrushes. Sandblasted bird's eye maple. Um, marble mosaic. And Cherry. Those were our first. We, we, me and my wife, Mami Kato, and I did a lot of marble mosaic in the early 90s. Um, this, these are two different desks. Uh, one design interpreted through two different materials, one with the marble mosaic top and the other with uh, um, 
southern yellow pine. Again, the silk um, marble pad in the middle, cast iron, no, cast bronze. I made the handles first in a kind of a highly figured burl wood, sandblasted those to accentuate the grain and then made patterns from that and had them cast in red bronze. Four colors of um, gold leaf, pink, pink, yellow, white, and silver leaf. The silver leaf oxidizes to that gray black. This is a, a fairly recent piece with mica doors. I love mica because it's a rock you can see through, for one thing, but um, you know, it was a thrill to, to stumble across it as a kid out in the woods. North Carolina was the, the epicenter of the mica mining industry. Now it's moved to India. Oh, this piece, the Philly Museum just bought this. I just finished a piece um, a day ago that uh, was intended to be a, the second mica piece. Um, but when it came time to put the mica in the doors, it was the wrong solution. Um, it was just, um, it competed too much with the rest of the activity in it. And uh, I had to come up with a plan B. Um, so now I've got, I've got a ton of mica for, you know, another project later. <laughs> the second group, this is structure is design. Um, and I was the first year of college at BU in 75 um, program in artisanry. My teacher, Jerry Osgood, um, gave the assignment to build a chair that was 6% over the breaking point. And then he walked away and we tried to figure out what that meant. <laughs> and um, he wasn't very talkative. And, um, <laughs> but we decided what it meant was that you can't just like carve a lump of wood and put a cushion on it and call it a chair. That yes, that would, that would work, but it's not optimizing the opportunity to have the structure inform the design. So this was my freshman response to that. And then it, it has, kind of, in retrospect, I realize it's become a really important directive for me that continues. I like that, I like that challenge and the, and the boundaries of um, using the actual structure to help define the form. They're sort of celebrating the joinery. This is a, a holdover from Peter Moss, uh, an important Danish modern furniture maker that um, my teacher, Jerry Osgood, studied with. But that was kind of a visual language that um, ran through the DNA there. It's sort of obvious where the forms come from and then how they're reinterpreted. Actually, that, the, the twig piece was going to be a treehouse at Penland. I had a big, a big idea, which didn't include knowing how to make one. <laughs> so it, it became a, a table. <laughs> and actually, a table that almost killed me because I, I ran out of twigs at Penland, I came home and a couple months later um, went to the park to collect some twigs to, to finish it. I put them in my kitchen oven to um, kiln dry them. And it turned out, and I remember reaching my head in there and snapping to hear if they were dry yet. It turned out it was poison sumac. <laughs> and, uh, so I met my new doctor for the first time. <laughs> and, uh, More, these are marble mosaic that mommy did as well, seven roses. These came back into my possession lately. I, I guess I've lived long enough to buy my own stuff at auction. You know. <laughs> these plant stands sit about this 40 inches or so. And um, this, I think, I've, I think I found the limit of um, that exploring the, the weight to the strength to weight ratio, um, making it it's absolutely as lightweight as is possible. Um, 
without sacrificing strength. That's a chair like it, the rocking chaise is in the runway. And this is another version of the, this one has little blue flowers, um, unlike the pink ones. This is the mate to the Grainer uh, desk that I saw last night at the Grainer's home. I think, I, I think they're here. That was a commission for my sister, and I, I said, what, what do you want? She said, well, something with lots of little drawers in it. So. And this, um, she actually was a little bigger than that. She was, she's, I'm sure she was seven feet tall. Um, I used to give an assignment to um, build, to my students to build the largest table that they could that would support their own weight um, from exactly, or no more than six board feet of lumber. The other, um, these would be projects that um, may have started with sort of a poetic notion or some other um, idea that I just wanted to give a physical presence as a piece of furniture. These are shots of a residency I did in the Dominican Republic in 85. And um, this was the kind of a pivotal piece for me that I did there. Um, it's where, when and where I realized that I was interested in making a kind of a portrait of a time and a place and incorporated everything that I knew about that place. Um, shipwrecks, Spanish dominion over the natives, um, flora and fauna. That piece came from this visiting the uh, uh, Kiyomizu temple in Kyoto. The tradition of erratic weaving. I, I wanted to make a, I wanted to make a, a nest the way a bird makes with, without all that saliva. <laughs> the idea of decay um, generating life was the piece on the right. This is too much to talk about, but it's sort of the same idea. Um, I tried again every couple of years. I think I got it right in the last, last one. Oh, sorry. That, well, this is one of the things that fed into it is um, what we place our faith in. Um, this is a guy about to go over Niagara Falls in the barrel. And again, that I could have sent this out and had it professionally polished, and you know it would have taken an hour. But I prefer to do it the old-fashioned American way by exploiting cheap immigrant labor. <laughs> my my smiling wife, mommy. Finally, this is. Um, Pine needle forest. Um, that's a, a, a lacquer, Japanese lacquer um, collaboration I did. Um, the form is based, the surface actually comes from literally dropping pine needles on the wet lacquer. The form came from the, the idea of this polished surface in a stone. I love the idea of preparing your mind to make the work of art by this process of making the ink. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>